Welcome to More Business, More Life podcast. And today my guest is Danielle Leslie. And we've known each other a long time. I've got to see her of all of it. She is the creator of Course from Scratch. And through creating that, uh, she's been able to help others make millions of dollars at the same time making millions of dollars for herself. Uh, completely transforming. And, and we're going to go back in time because we're going to go back to the time that she was laid off and, and in debt and then going all the way to becoming a millionaire and now impacting so many lives. And I need to highlight uh, over 60% of the folks that she helps are black women and she's helping them in the communities. And it's so amazing. And so we're going to, we're going to talk about all of this. Let's, let's dive in. Welcome, Danielle. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thanks so much. It's so great to be here, Steve. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's been something I've been wanting to do for so long. So I've been watching you from the side, and you know, uh, for those of us, uh, for those of you who don't know, like Danielle and I go like way back, way like back. different different <laughs> jobs. I was running my marketing firm, and and she was working for different uh, technology platforms, and you know it. So it's so awesome. Like, I love that as, as I get older to watch people and it's so fun to see your friends and, and your colleagues, like start having their life emerge into all these amazing ways. And so just to see how far you've come and now, you know, how much of an impact you're making, you know, on the planet, you know, that you not only created millions of dollars for yourself with your, with, with your, uh, your program, how to teach people to create their own programs, their own online courses, and now helping them create millions, you know, and the fact that over 60% of them are black women, which is so awesome because you're helping the community right now. Anyway, I've just so much kudos. I just have to give those shout outs to you because uh, it even gives me tingles in my body. Like you are doing it. And I'm so happy to see it, Daniel. Congratulations. Aww. Yeah. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah. That means a lot. It's uh, it's really, really good work and really fun work. Absolutely. It's uh, you know, I guess speaking to that, did you always know that that like, did you always have like a calling to help people or did it, or did you like notice your own, like, Oh, I can do this and I could teach others. Or how did that realization that you were going to teach come about? Just curious. I'm getting right into something. <laughs> I know. I love it. You're like, let's go right there. Um, yeah, I mean, um, it's interesting because I think I've always just been addicted to doing what I love and staying close to what I was good at. Uh, because what I love to do is what I what I was good at. What I was good at was what I love to do. So it really came from from that. Um, and I found back in 20. 11 was probably when I became most aware of this interest in learning something, doing something, and then translating it into a blueprint or into something fun. Um, and I love creating, you know, frameworks and acronyms. Uh, so that's probably when I first became aware of it. And, um, and then what I found is that I love doing that in different forms. You know, I love doing it over video at large, but I also love the one-on-one -on -one work or the small group work where you can really see like the person's eyes light up when they have mm -hmm. that aha moment or when they're sharing their heart with you. So yeah, so it's been, it's been a journey of learning um, what, how I show up as an educator, which I didn't even consider myself an educator, you know, when I first got into this. Yeah, that's, uh, that's so me. I know, like, I, I can relate to that, like noticing, wait, I'm a teacher, and I have to learn how to be a better teacher. You know, I think, uh, well, actually, when we met uh, was right around the time we were launching the tax brain stolen NASCAR. And yes. that ended up that ended up uh, going on to being one of our biggest awards, we were the number six viral ad in the world. And, and that actually has got me to the teaching moment. And so that's actually funny because I didn't think about this when I asked the question of like, how did you decide to teach? Because when we did that and then we become the number six uh, viral ad, then I got asked to speak in Las Vegas and there was like 500 people and I wasn't a speaker. I even sat behind a table like it was a panel, but there was no panel. It was just, it was just me. So it was like so ridiculous. <laughs> But what, it. but what happened was six months later at another event, a woman came up to me crying and I didn't know her and she hugged me and I'm like, and I, I was fine with that. I hugged, I, you know, well, it's been tough this year cause I am a hugger. Right. So I, <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm hugging her and she's like, 
uh, I said, hello. And she said, you don't know me. And I said, I know. <laughs> and then she like, <laughs> she, she separated from me. And she said, six months ago, my husband and I went to Las Vegas and we were at that event, the one that was my first speaking gig. And she said, uh, my husband and I invested all of our life savings, all of our retirement in a business and we were failing. And we went to that event as a last ditch effort. And what you taught we turned our business around and I just had to come and thank you. And it's like, even makes me feel a little emotional right now. Like I'm like this woman, I like, I was like, and I had before then, you know, I, being in Silicon Valley where we met, it's like, you know, I'm working with Apple and Charles Schwab and Nestle. And because I started in, in marketing and ads in the nineties, there wasn't social media. I had to go after the bigger budgets to do anything. Right. And so then that was the first moment in my life, Danielle, that I was like, oh my gosh, I can help someone like just a person. Cause when you're with like the big companies, they're like, great job, Steve. Thanks for making us millions more. And uh, we'll pay right. you net nine. We'll pay you net 90. You know, like you have to wait, <laughs> oh you have to God. wait three months for your money yes, too. You know? So, right. mm -hmm. so it's, um, it's, it's so, it's so amazing. Um, and I when, know. and what has, uh, so when you, so I'm just curious, you know, did you have a certain moment like this where you knew like, cause that was the moment I was like, Oh, I got to learn how to teach better. Like, I was like, Oh, if that already worked, I, 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 like I, I can teach other, like I have information that I could change people's lives that like, I'm just curious, was there like a moment or did it just evolve into this teaching? Yeah. Um, I have, uh, it's funny, I have a moment that's coming to mind similar to yours when I think I had already learned the impact I could have, but I didn't realize the impact I was having. And it really like pushed me to, to further what I was doing. Um, but I was at a, a conference as well and uh, spoke on the stage. And afterwards, there was a line of people just waiting to say hello. And one woman, she was really shy, really quiet. And, you know, she just, just handed me a card and kind of like scampered away. And I was like, okay. Uh, and she's like, you know, just, just open this later. And I got back to my hotel room and I opened up the card and it just said, uh, Hey, Danielle, I was on your masterclass a year ago. I joined course from scratch right after that. I've made a quarter of a million dollars since then. And I was looking forward to seeing you at this uh, event to tell you, you know, you've changed my life. Like, thank you. And I think it was also learning what she's done as well. So it's one thing to have someone say that, you know, wow, I, in the last year, I've been able to create this in my life. But then I found out that she helps other people. Uh, so she used to be an assistant principal um, at elementary school and she would trade stocks on the side and she would use the money she made from stocks to travel on her time off. And so eventually she just started making so much from that. She's like, oh, I can teach other people to do this. So now she has an initiative where she's helping teach other people. And she's, she's a black woman as well, helping other people learn to, um, to, you know, generate wealth for themselves um, so that they can be with their kids, travel, you know, live on their own terms. And she has this initiative to make, uh, uh, have, help a thousand people make a thousand dollars a day to generate a million a day uh, so they can make changes in communities. So they can pull their money together and say, we are going to change this neighborhood. We're going to change uh, this school. We're going to donate to this school. So to know that you have that impact, I think that was when I realized, oh, what I'm doing reaches this person, but it also reaches their community and their students. And I'm giving them, you know, this, this framework to empower them to do that. Awesome. 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 Daniel. Like, you know, I, I thought that too, you know, you're like, you're, I'm one man, you're one woman. How are we going to make an impact in the world? And then this is case in point because the ripple effect is real. If you help one person and they go help 10 people, or in this case, a thousand people, right. You know, that this is, uh, Th this gets real, real quick. And uh, it's a beautiful thing to see that. And so, you know, for anyone listening, just take that note, like just listen to what Daniel just said, because now how many people are going to be impacted, right? I mean, this is... This is, this is big. This is thousands of people. And this is just one of your clients, right? You start multiplying that out. Uh, this is when you can see that you can really, really help people. And that's what's so exciting to me about more companies becoming conscious, you know, that we're not just about making money. How are we going to make an impact? How are we going to have social impact on the world? And I refuse. And I'm saying that real, like I've drawn the line for many years. Like I made the mistake of working for a few companies and 
I'm like, what are you doing? And I'm like, okay, not okay. And I cut them off and I just couldn't do it. And I still have other, there's other speakers I know they'll jump on stage with a company and I can't do it because I'm good at what I do. And I'm like, I'm not going to help you make money because you're not doing yeah. good. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so, so kudos on all kinds of levels. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. And just a few more successes. So like, you know, we're recording this in 2020. So I'm just curious how, I mean, you know, how, how did you uh, start to fare like, and, and make the moves that you were doing? Um, You know, did you see an impact because you are, um, you know, you were already virtual. Like, so, I mean, like how, uh, you know, if I can ask, how did that affect you? And like, how did you, how were you able to pivot through this a little bit, you know? Absolutely. So um, it's interesting. It, it's been a, a huge time of growth. Um, you talk a lot about, you know, more life, right? More business, more life. And I've definitely seen that happen in this time. Um, so as you mentioned, we were already completely a virtual team. So everyone was already meeting in the Zoom room where it happens, where all the magic happens. And um, what ended up happening is our business grew because we already had all those things in place and the frameworks to teach people. So we had our biggest month to up, up to that point in April, you know, when just when quarantine started and everyone was, was at home and they realized for some people, they realized, yo, I have like some extra time to actually think about how to craft my life or how to, you know, build something around my passion. And so we saw, uh, we had a million dollar, our first million dollar month, um, April was a huge month and then July, uh, July. And what we saw was this, just this renewed interest and in, in people realizing, wait a minute, I can look at my gifts and actually use them for good to have an impact. And I can create my own schedule around that. Right. So it was huge. And for me personally, it meant that because we, yeah, we were kind of at home, we didn't have all the, the social uh, uh, things to, to go to things that started to feel like maybe obligations. Uh, we didn't have any of that. And so we were able to, gosh, like last month we moved to a new space. So being at home helped us realize, you know, we're, we want more space, you know, we want more space to dream and create and spread out um, and imagine. And so we moved to a bigger space. It's like three times the the space of our previous place. Um, in that same month, I brought on five new team members. So the team grew uh, and we had our biggest month to uh, up to that point. And I worked the least, um, that I had worked in a while. And I felt the most peace I have felt in a long time, uh, coming into 2020, the one thing I was looking for, um, I had my, my revenue number, right. So it was like, okay, we want to do 10 million this year, but the, the thing I was looking for was peace. And, uh, I found that, you know, I found that, um, and in a, in a way I've, I've never known it before. So that's been the biggest thing. And now I'm able to pass that on to my team. So we set an intention for the end of the year. We said, we're going to hit this number and we're going to do it at peace. We're going to end the year at peace. Uh, and feel really good with what we're doing. So it's really, really transformed, uh, the fabric of our company, you know, me personally, and then extended to my team and it's extending to, uh, the people we're reaching with our program as well. It's really remarkable just to hit the highlights of what you just said. So coming to 2020 and, and this is what I believe, like your intention was so strong that maybe the road that you were on changed a little bit, but you were already on this path and it's an awakening for so many folks. I've been hearing the same thing, you know, like now I don't have that commute time. Like, oh, I was spending an hour in the car uh, there and back. So that's two hours. That's 10 hours a week. I could start a business with 10 hours a week. So all those things. So you were like, you know, right time, right place kind of scenario. And then on top of that, you had, you know, pure intentions and you're really helping people. And so you're having this amazing thing. And now you've been able to hire, I mean, where most companies were like figuring out if they had to lay people off. I mean, so, so many, uh, amazing, amazing things. So I'm so, I'm so happy to hear. And, you know, I want to switch gears with this, highlighting all this and, um, you know, now having this success is so amazing. I'm so happy for you. And I'm also so happy for all of your clients because like they're getting the impact. But I want to go back in time because I want to say like, you know, 
you know, I, and I know you, so I know it wasn't always like this, but, you know, maybe paint a picture of what it was like before this, the, you know, you had this situation, you know, so people can understand the journey that you've been on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know it's so interesting. I, the, it started, um, with me getting laid off really like this business came after I had, um, went through a whole thing of trying to start a startup, um, which was shortly after we met, I left my job, um, you know, traveled around the country, we raised money, and then ended up broke a couple years later, moved back in with my mom had six figures in student loan debt, no savings and no job prospects, um, and had to really start over. And that's when I found this world, you know, of online education and, um, and it was a couple jobs later that I was laid off. So it was uh, fall of 2015. And I was faced with that same question of, wait a minute, like, what's the next? I still had the debt, still had the saving, uh, no savings, haven't learned my lesson. Um, and, and I'm wondering, like, okay, where am I going to find the next job? What am I, what am I going to do? And in that time, it was great, because I realized, I had spent so much of my life just sharing like unsolicited advice, frankly, to my friends, um, just because I loved what I did. Right. And I and you talk about teaching and it could be at a house party and someone's like, hey, do you know how to do X, Y, Z? And I'm like, yes, let me tell you about it. <laughs> and all of that kind of meant that when I was faced with this, this um, just not knowing where my my next check was going to come from. I just let my friends know because um, I happened to be going to a Friendsgiving that weekend. And um, he said, wait, 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 you, you were laid off. And I, and I said, yeah. Um, and he's like, can I hire you? You know, I'm, I'm looking for someone to help us with our small business initiative. So within that first month, I was able to just through conversations, regular conversations with friends, um, you know, they said, I want you to consult for me. Like, I know, you know, this stuff, let me just pay you to like pick your brain and help have you build some things for me. So that was really me really like having nothing in terms of, you know, talk about not coming from like wealthy parents or, uh, you know, knowing how to delegate higher, none of that stuff. It was really me being like, all right, let's, let's just try this thing out. Um, and that was the launching pad for course from scratch, you know, for the programs we have now. Um, but it, it still wasn't immediate, right? It took after I got into the consulting, it took nine months of me doubting myself, um, even after all that work I had done of saying, but I haven't gotten to this point yet. So I'm not ready. Well, I haven't done this yet. This wasn't perfect. Um, and what really set me off was a friend of mine had was having a women's conference and the MC canceled on her like four days before the conference. And it was out in New York. I was living in the Bay Area at the time. Uh, still, you know, broke, like, you know, I was doing my consulting, but I didn't have a ton of money. So I scrounged up the money together to get a flight to New York for this conference. And she said, can I hire you? Can I pay you $400 to be the MC? And I was like, yes, I will take the $400. And she's like, I'll refund you the ticket amount. And I'm like, thank you. I need that money. But I MC that conference. I'd never MC a conference before. But I, you know, have a little note, note cards, drop some, some drop some bars, you know, did my thing um, the best that I could. And after that conference, because I put all the love into it, uh, she said, they want like for you to do a webinar or something like, can you, can you just share more? You were dropping little hints about what you do, but can you just share more? And so we did a webinar and I think that's what really made me a believer because on that webinar, I just pre-sold my course. I said, you've been doubting yourself. If you don't take this opportunity, I don't know what, like, I don't know what, what's going to happen. So I just went out on a limb, pre-sold my program. And that was the beginning, you know, made like $8,000. Um, and I was like, I just made eight grand in a week. And I'm like, and now that means I have to build the program and have to like yeah. deliver it and follow it through. <laughs> so that's when things kind of took off. That was uh, kind of the journey there. It gets real, real quick when you do that. I mean, and that it's like a self-made, um, you know, deadline because now you you made that, but then it's imposed because others are involved. They paid you, so now you're going to come through. Um, so just to back up a little bit, and thank you for sharing this story, and thank you for being vulnerable and sharing what's going what's going on. I think it's so useful for others to hear these stories. You. Um, so even as people are like, Hey, I want to hire you just at like social events and you're, and you're getting this consulting work. 
you uh, you still didn't think this was going to be the way. So you're kind of still thinking, oh, should I go look for another job? Is that was that was was going through the mind that first like nine months? You said you were still in and out kind of thing. Actually, I would say after the first month, because I was able to make the same amount as my salary, I knew, okay, this is going to work. Um, but it was going from, okay, I'm doing consulting, I'm sticking my toe in to I'm going to be a full blown entrepreneur business owner, I'm going to launch my course. That was Got the it. thing I was avoiding. That's, yeah, that's, that's it. Perfect. Well, and that's what I wanted to know. So yeah, so so you knew consulting was working, but then stepping into having your own business, and then that goes to growing something where you have employees and, and all of those things. And, and then that's where you had, you had that moment and it just, um, uh, and so it's, it, it happened, you know, for you to take that action, you know, sometimes I think life just, uh, nudges us or slaps us, you know, so the fact that you got laid off, the fact that you're going to this event and then now you're getting to MC. So there was definitely some universe pushing and you took it, you know, you didn't, you didn't have to. And even knowing you, sometimes you could be a bit of an introvert too. So to even take the MC jobs, was there anything like where right away you knew you were going to do it or did you hesitate for a second or, uh, or you knew <laughs> I was all in, I was like, screw it. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And then that, it's more after I committed. I was like, wait a minute, what did I just sign up for? Because <laughs> I'm yeah. like, wait, I've never ever seen before. What are we doing? Yeah. Well, just from watching you that you've kind of been that, and, I, and it makes sense why you're able to be such a good consultant and teacher, because I've watched you over the years, like some of the events we're at, you, you stand back and you listen, you learn, you like figure out what's going on. And then when you know something, then you bring your voice in. And, and I think that's kind of been you ever since I've known you and and then it makes sense because when you learn something and you feel well about it, you're going to speak about it. You're you're willing to do that. And so here here you are, you know, Absolutely. so I remember when you invited me to um, you were speaking at an event and it was when I was new to learning about speaking and, you know, what what you can do on stage. And um, it was somewhere up in the Bay Area. Yeah. And I remember I did have a car. I like rented a car. I'm like, OK, Steve has this thing on the weekend. I don't know if you remember that. And I drove up on a whim and I'm like, all right, I'm going to see him in action. Um, and yes, I love learning from people like you. You know, the, you're just natural talent and so giving and generous with your knowledge. Um, so absolutely. Uh for my entire life, I will be a student. Um, yeah, that's probably a big, big key. And quarantine has helped me be even more of a student, frankly, more time for coaching and, and mentorship and everything. Yeah, that's in, in what ways like so you um, just more reading or, or hiring more coaches? Like how, how did that show up for you in during quarantine? Absolutely. So um, it's interesting. I was talking, speaking of one of my coaches, my therapist would be a big one. Um, but I was talking to her the other day and about how I want to develop um, more healthy habits, essentially, mainly yeah. around movement. That's always been a big challenge for me, uh, just physical exercise. Um, and she helped me realize that, oh, I have some habits that lend to my success already. Um, and one of those habits is constantly surrounding myself by people who can be a mirror for me, who can reflect back what they're seeing, and they shorten my feedback loop. So examples of that are my therapist. Um, and so I see her one on one. And with my husband, we see her together. Uh, so that's really helped us be way more connected during quarantine. We've actually we're the most connected we've been um, maybe uh, you know, since the beginning of our relationship, which is really interesting. It's on, on another level. Uh, another one is an executive coach I work with one-on-one, -on -one, um, and he is just very spiritual as well. So it's really important for me, for whoever I'm working with, yes, they get the business. You know, yes, he's run uh, multi-million dollar businesses before. He can help me with hiring uh, operations, but he connects with me on a soul level. Like he really sees me and gets what's going on and goes deeper. Um, and then aside from that, it would be... Um, uh, currently, I guess that's kind of it. And then friends, we have really, really a tight circle of friends who also see the world as full of possibilities. Uh, talk about, you know, thinking of the galaxies, you know, our world is not just limited to this web page or this social media channel. No, no, no. It is the galaxy. It is the world. It is mm -hmm. what are we going to do for uh, connecting to the environment, you know, and, and to individuals and to people's dreams. So all of those things have uh, helped me shorten the feedback loop of, oh, yeah, that awareness, like I keep doing this thing, right? I keep running into this obstacle and it's helped me collapse time. 
you know? So my theme at the beginning of quarantine was like this quantum leap, you know, how do we have a quantum leap? How do we collapse time and do what takes others five years in five months, uh, but do it with ease, right? And do it um, while at peace with ourselves. So all of those, yeah, all those things I've put into place, give me that like tighter feedback loop. Well, and that's so beautiful. And it's, it's really hard to coach ourselves looking in the mirror. And I'm, I'm the same as you. I, I'm, I'm a teacher now as you are, and I'm always going to be a student. You know, I used to say that I'm going to learn until the day I die, but now I don't even believe that, you know, when I die, I'm probably going to learn more. It's going to be like, yeah. oh, like full <laughs> on open. Right. You know, so, um, so I, it's, uh, it is, it is, uh, quite amazing. And when you bring that into your life, you do collapse time frames because you don't have to, you know, make those mistakes and you don't have to have those things happen. And then even, uh, it's interesting you brought up your relationship because that's what I found too. Like at first I invested in business, but then I started as that became like no problem. Like you learned so much and business is going. Then I started investing in my in my, my, my personal th things, my, my wife and I, and our relationship, the way that I'm, I, I'm a father, you know, like start investing in like how to be a better father, like even going to conferences, I never would have thought of like, you know, uh, school conferences and, you know, how, how do we teach our children better and like things, you know, so it's like all of it, like, why would I not get a coach? It's like whatever. So now whatever I want to know, it's like, well, who's the best at that? Okay. Like, okay, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go hang out with you. And, uh, you know, so I get, you know, one of one big question I get, so it's always good. And I, you know, I answer this in different ways, but it's always good to hear different voices. How do you find those mentors? Like, have they just, popped up on your doorstep or, or what do you tell others when they, cause probably you've been asked this too. Like, how do you find those, those folks that are the right ones for you? Absolutely. Um, it's so funny as you're talking, I was thinking I do the same thing. Like I just hired a personal trainer, but I don't think of her as a personal trainer because I said, I want you to help me with my holistic health practices. So, and I gave her a list. I'm like, I want, you know, I'd love someone to help me meditate daily, do meditation and visualization and then do movement and, you know, tap into myself. And so the other, it was like this past Tuesday, we're sitting there and I'm like, and I had that moment where I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like, 9am I'm sitting in my home in our new place with this woman who's basically giving me a, a private meditation and visualization class you know she's telling me like visualize this and do this and um so yeah so I'm with you like you can really create whatever um and so for me it's been in terms of how I find these folks it in the beginning when I was earlier on in building my business uh learning more about who I was I sought them out so it was for me, seeing who are the leaders in my space, um, at that time, I was measuring my progress according to revenue. So that was my that was the first measuring stick for me. OK, who's saying that they're making 20 million, 30 million a year? Uh, who's, you know, 10 steps ahead of me? And then I would look at second qualifier. Uh, how are what's their lifestyle like? You know, do do I love to, like where they're living or how they're living and who they're being? So that was what I would look for at first. Um and then are they a great uh, teacher and educator? Are they able to translate the results they get into a blueprint that I can follow? Um, so that was like the first way I would find them. And it was just if they popped up in my feed in an ad, right? And I would just go check out their website and see if, right. if it made sense. And then I'd find if they have a mastermind or coaching. And what I'm finding is that as I get later and more advanced in my business, now um, I'm just, I'm attracting these people. So it's either people who I've worked with previously, and we're just morphing the way we work together because my needs have changed. Or it is that friend from college who I haven't spoken with in a decade, sending me a DM saying, hey, I'd love to talk to you about your financial planning and da da da. And me brushing them off, you know, three times over a year, and then finally mm -hmm. get on the phone with them and then blowing my mind with mm -hmm. how they're able to analyze a case study and, and what I'm doing in my business and me saying, okay, you're my business manager. Um, it's, uh, and then it's attracting my uh, new head of marketing who has this incredible vision. Um, and it was knowing him, I've known him for like four years, right, but just reconnecting with him. So lately, it's been uh, attracting those people um, and just putting it out. Sometimes I'm looking or just uh, them coming to me. Yeah. Yeah. 
and and it's noticing you know i notice like our awareness there's an old saying and I, I don't know where it comes from but they say when the student is ready the teacher appears Absolutely. and i do believe that and you know like it comes back to that thing that it's always there it's like the penal gland in the brain it like it it's uh, kind of like a filter as well and there and there's different parts like i'm not totally schooled on ho- how all the brain works but what i do know about this mechanism is uh, that it, uh, um, and it's another part of the brain, I'm forgetting the name, but it allows us to basically like, you know, if you've ever seen a car and you've never seen that car before, but then the rest of the day, you'll see like five more times, right? Mm -hmm. Then that that's always been there, but our brain wasn't filtering for that, you know? So it's, it comes and, and so that's how becoming more aware, uh, it just, it just naturally naturally happens and then and then feeling that it's real like when that person comes being ready to say okay you know just uh just just give it a go and i think it is important to say and then i wanted to parlay into another question here but i basically um you know when i looked at it like i couldn't afford my first coach you know like i remember that moment i just got to say this for those if it's like a money thing but in my 20s one thing that I was embarrassed about, I, I lost $4 million. Like, so I earned and lost $4 million. So by 31, I felt like a loser. I was like, what an idiot. I, you know, and you, and I had other friends in Silicon Valley and, you know, being in the San Francisco Bay area, you've got, you know, all these things happening and we're measuring our own worth by what everyone else is doing. And I was and not everyone does this, but I definitely got caught in that. Yeah. And, uh, and then, and then the reason I bring this up at this point in this conversation is that then in my at 31, not by me picking, I got dragged to an event and I met my mentor. And then that, that decade, looking back now, being in my forties, I invested a half a million dollars in myself. Now at 31, I couldn't sign that check. There was no way I could say, Oh yeah, I'll spend half a million dollars on myself right now. That's like crazy talk, right? I, mm-hmm. I barely could hire that coach. Like literally I had payroll that week. And I needed every bit of the dollars. I had to borrow two grand just to get through the week after hiring the coach. But I thought, I thought to myself, man, I'm locked up. I created a jail for myself. And you know what? If I, I've not figured out how to get it. So I just made a commitment to myself. I said, either this coach is going to help me, or I'm just going to, if I collapse this business, then it wasn't meant to be. Cause at that point I was kind of sick of it. You know, like I said, I felt like a loser. I was like, I need help. I need help. And, and I wish I could have said, I figured it faster and I didn't go through all that pain, but you know, all of us have our journey. And for me, I, I waited too long if I would have gotten, and now I've gotten asked to speak uh, in front of youth or like high schools, one high school, a teacher asked the last question. He's like, Steve, last question. If you could go back to your high school self, what are two words you would tell yourself? And I was like, get mentors. And I was like, Oh my gosh, did I say that? I like said it so fast. I'm like, get mentors, get mentors. That's it. I was like, no, that's the real deal. You got to just find people in your life. So it's, um, it's amazing that you've done that. I definitely found that. And in all aspects of our life and that you're opening it up to your relationship. I think those are all great things just to echo um, and then, and then the fact that we're both teaching now. So now, not only that, we're, we, you know, we are being mentored and we are mentoring. And I think that's so important too, because I've meet coaches and they're like, I, I am a coach. I don't need a coach. And I'm like, whoa, you know, like right away, you know, okay. Yeah. I see you. <laughs> right. Uh, it, and they talk about those three different levels, how you have, you get, um, a mentorship from someone who is ahead of you and whatever, you know, whatever niche you're, you're looking at at that time. And then you have your peer mentors, um, who are all kind of at the same p- point of the journey. And then you have the people you mentor. So yeah, it's important to have for me, uh, to have that balance of all three for sure. It, it's so important. And I kind of, you know, one, one couple things of just like, uh, words, I guess, like I think of mastermind as that peer level, right? Because you're masterminding, you're kind of like helping each other. And then uh, when I look at mentorship, then I look at it as like, that's the person that's just showing me where they've gone. They're kind of ahead of me, but you know, I love the levels of learning as well. Like there's a couple of different ways people look at learning. And this one came to me uh, uh, really big is, and I, I teach everyone this, especially when you're an entrepreneur, is that if you want to if you want to learn something read about it right if you want to get good at it do it and if you want to master it teach it teach it yes it's, uh and so that comes full into this so it's um uh, so it's it's awesome so thanks for sharing all that i want i want to move into this area of more business more life right because we you know 
and I know you know this because we've talked about it um, off of this off of this podcast. But you, w- we can work. <laughs> we can go do stuff, right? And then yes. we get motivated to do that. So how? Did you start to, you know, maybe we'll look at before and after as well here, but how do you um, live your life? How do you have that more life and run a business? Because you know, as you and I both know, so many entrepreneurs are like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I, I'll sleep when I die and all those kinds of comments, right? You know, um, mm-hmm. how, how do you run a, a multi-million dollar business and have, have the life at the same time, Danielle? Totally. Um I can say I have that now. I have that balance now. And I think the reason I have it now is because I didn't have it before. Um, And it's interesting because I would say, I would see others talk about the hustle and the grind. And I would say, oh, that's not me. You know, that's great for them, but that's not me. But when I look back, I'm like, but yes, it was. Like, maybe you were calling it something different, but you were definitely at your end. Um, My really good friend, Sean, visited me in our new place, um, a few weeks ago. And he said, D, do you remember a year ago where you were? And I was like, Oh my gosh. And we were in LA for a team retreat. So I flew my team out and I flew some of our members out as well. And I, I I brought Sean out to facilitate for us. And it was a whole week. And I met up with him on the rooftop of the, the Airbnb we had. And, and he was going off and he's like, you know, no one knows this, but I'm taking the rest of the year off. And I was like, and he's like, do you remember your face when I told you that? And I'm like, yeah, like I was so, I mean, I was so crushed because I thought, wait a minute. I feel so like stretched and stressed and heavy. Like I've got these team members and everyone's asking for my time and oh my gosh. And then I built this business that I feel trapped in. Like, what is this? Like, what's the point of making all this revenue, this money, and just to say you have it, but you can't enjoy it. So he reminded me of that moment. It was just a year ago. And to fast forward to now where it's like, I can be intentional about what's on my calendar. You know, I can open up my calendar for next week and I've got, you know, four hours, like free, flexible every day. Um, It's, it's limited meetings, uh, you know, with team members. Um, It's the right amount of coaching that I like to do with my students that keeps me motivated and in touch with what they need. Um, It is being able to have dinner, you know, with Caleb every day, hang out with him in the middle of the day. Uh, Yesterday, we walked, you know, it's moving to a place where we've got trees and nature and water right here. We can see the sunset every day, which is what we did yesterday. that's what it feels like now. It's being able to call up uh, a friend, you know, uh, on an afternoon, look at my calendar, my Saturday, my Sunday are wide open, uh, being able to dream and create. Um, that's what it looks like now. Yeah. That's awesome. And then what, and thank you for sharing that. And how was the transition? If you could go like, you know, was it step by step? Was it like, okay, I'm just going to throw my calendar away. And I do that by the way. And I'm, I keep reinventing it. Like, this even says 2017, but it doesn't matter. I print off these things and I start like, okay, what days do I want to work? And it's been that way with, uh, with being in quarantine. Cause before that I would like work and then we'd take a month and go to Europe, like right before, you know, so I would do things like that. But now that I've been home, it's like, okay, working chunks and doing like what you're talking about where I'll take a two hour lunch. So right after this, it's going to go into my lunch and I'm going to have two hours with my kids and we're going to eat and go outside in the trees. Like, and then I can go back and, and even talking to my family, like, Hey, what do you want? Do you want dad to work really hard on a couple of days and then take the rest of the week off? You know, which I do like that. I'm going to work two days and take five off, which I've done, (laughs) but it, but it was by design, right? It was by design. So back to the question, Mm -hmm. what, uh, how did you start do, how did you start doing this? How did you start the in this process of this change in this last year? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. First, it was an awareness on two levels. So one, it was at the uh, macro societal level. So becoming aware that social conditioning, living in the States, growing up in America, um, there is this, this 40 hour work week. That yeah. was, and I learned about this by uh, reading Kate Winthrop's book, Do Less. So she talks about how, you know, biologically for as men, you are, um, uh, 
your, uh, what am I trying to say? Your testosterone is renewed on a daily basis, right? So your cycle, so to speak, is on a 24 hour basis. And how for women, of course, we have a 28 day cycle. So all of those, the up and down that we have over 28 days, men just have in a 24 hour period, which means um, you guys are able to go, 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 go um, at a more consistent and predictable rate. Whereas for us, I might have a week where I'm like super lethargic, super tired and out of it uninspired, depressed. And then the next week I'll be just like, boom, like through the Ooh. roof, like able to just like put it in and that yeah. might last for three weeks. So it was that level of awareness that, Oh, well in the States, the work day was created around the male, uh, biology around that knowing, Oh, every day we accept, we expect the same amount of energy and the same amount of output. Therefore it's going to be nine to five, nine to five, nine to five. Um, so it was that level knowing like, oh, wait a minute, I've been trying to bend myself to this, which was not even created with me in mind. Yeah. Like bi biologically, it's not for me. I, no wonder I'm, you know, challenged with it and trying to fight it. So it was that level of awareness. And then it was the personal question of where did this need to always be on and always feel energetic and at my best come from. And it was through, you know, therapy and hanging out with my family and realizing, oh, my mom, you know, like, like I took on that from her, like she's got this identity of needing to have her maca and her supplements and her this and her that and her tea to always be on 24 seven, because she's trying to chase that ideal of productivity, uh, which we were taught. And so I inherited that. Um, so that was the first step for me was awareness. Like, where does yeah. this come from? Um, and, and then the turning, like the pivotal point after that awareness was just kind of like the rock bottom. You know, it was when uh, in my relationship, we had just finished our launch in the business. And I was just, I mean, stretched, stressed, not communicating with Caleb. And he's like, you're working too much. You've got to like, look at this. Um, so it was, it was really like reaching that point when I had to really take a hard look. And um, it was a conversation with my, my coach. And he said, what do you want to do right now? And I said, I want to run away. Like I, like I want to be free. I want to run into the forest and write my book. And I don't want anyone to talk to me. And he said, is that what freedom is for you? Running away? not talking to anyone. And I was like, Oh, shoot. No, it's not. You know, it, it's not. And he said, you know, what does freedom look like? And he's like, because if I know anything about you, freedom is intentional. You know, it's it's not re reactive and responsive and running away. Right, right. So in that conversation, he helped me define what freedom looked like and how to be intentional about it. And that was when I said, Oh, okay, Yes, the goal is 10 million revenue. Awesome. Great. The team is going to be, you know, executing on that. Personally, it is how can I get my work days down to uh, four hours a day, you know, and then we can work on three hours and two hours. So right. that that was the moment for me. Nice. Yeah. And then again, coming back to guidance. So it goes back to what we were talking about having, having a coach to see us so that we don't go run into the forest and then who knows what would have happened. Right. Because, <laughs> exactly. you know, uh, and it, uh, and you know, it, intentional is the word like I, and I was a minute ago using the word design. And I think that's, that's it, you know, like so often, we find ourselves in, and like you said, in this society, it's built around productivity, and that, uh, and that even that drive, I think, you know, really is, uh, is a newer thing. I, I looked at, you know, it's interesting with both of you look at the history of these things. A lot of this happened in the 1900s. And then I even was thinking, okay, it has the industrial revolution. But then the more I read about that, it actually did like people were working like that, but then Henry Ford, who was crazy. Like if you look at some of the stuff he said, Holy cow. So I'm not, I'm not vouching for that guy that much, you know, that much, but he did do some stuff. But if you read some of the stuff he said, you'd be like, what, how can you even bring this guy's name up? Cause he said some very hurtful things in the world, but he, he also did some cool things like, uh, well, and it was selfish too, to be really direct. He knew that if he wanted to sell more cars, he had to give people time off because they, well, he had to pay them more so they could buy his cars and he had to give them more time off. So he actually started something after the industrial revolution to give people weekends off. Cause they were, most people only had Sunday off before that. Like then they were working all the time. Then it wasn't until the 1970s with that whole recession that we got into the, into the level that we're at now, where it's like nonstop. And then that's where you have Europeans looking at it 
how do you raise your family like this? I don't understand. You know, like they, mm-hmm. they're like, they don't understand why we don't take time off. Um, yes. But, you know, to, to that point, I like you're, you're, you're in it and um, it's really hard. You, you know, like I, this is where I, I think I mentioned just a few minutes ago, like you life will tap you and then it'll slap you. Right. It, it's um, mm. and, that, and, and I think just this, this awareness though, that we're, we're not meant to work like this, you know, and even when, you know, and, and I'm not saying to go live in teepees or anything like, you know, I think we're gotten comfortable into our civilized world. However, there's a lot to learn by indigenous populations and how they lived. And even you were talking about the women's cycle. There, there are indigenous tribes that, you know, when, when the woman was going through their moon cycle, they like got to go take the week off, you know, like, or just like they would have space. They would give space Mm. for that. You know, I think, you know, there's, man, we're, we're not made to just work and, and die. And, and one thing that hit me really hard, Danielle, was one of my friends got to retire early and he was going to an Island in the Caribbean and then he would got off. He was getting off the the airplane, and he was wondering why no one else was getting up. And he got up, and he was like walking off the plane. And then he saw all the wheelchairs lined up. The the what do they call it? The you know the jetway that you get off oh, the plane. Wow. Yeah, right. Like, and then he looked back, and he saw how he was like one of the youngest people on the plane. And he's mm. like, oh my gosh. Mm. Wow. Like, what what, what, what are we joke. living for? Right? What are we living for? You know, mm-hmm. it's uh it's just it's just it's just amazing, you know. So so just putting that into our, our brain and then it comes back to this, what you're saying, the intention. Um, how are we designing our life? Because so often we go to make a certain dollar amount, and even you said, it, and I did it too. How much money are we making? And then we realize, okay you start building for that and then you could actually build yourself into a mess. And I did that. I, I know I did that. And I'm like, Whoa, what did I build? It's that treadmill you can't get off of. And then, um, but you can get off. And so my favorite line is design your life and then build your career business around that. And it's, it's hard for people to, yeah. to grasp that sometimes, but really, you know what? And so for us, it starts with, talking with my wife and my kids. What do we want? What do we want for the next year? How do we keep iterating this? So when you start to design your life, like where, where do you start, Danielle? Like, how do you, how do you start? Yeah, we had a, um, our business manager actually had led us in a discussion, um, similar to that, that helped me remember that. So for us, it was him asking us, what do you want 2020 to look like? Uh, when it comes to, we started with family, Um, so how much time do you want to spend with your parents, with your family? What does that look like? So putting those on the calendar first, um, secondly, friends. So reminding, he reminded us, you know, you, you really are the average of the five people closest to you. And so let's re-examine who are you spending most of your time with and who do you want to be spending more time with? Uh, who's going to help you expand, who's, you know, 10 steps ahead of you in wellness or fitness or business or whatever you're looking for. Um, So we looked there and we made a list of, okay, these are the, these are 10 people who we would love to become closer with this year. Um, And, uh, and then therefore we've been more intentional about spending time with, with them, um, whether it's on zoom um, uh, or luckily some of them lived in our building, our old building. Um, And, and then uh, for me personally, it's been that calendar design. So going and asking myself, what does my ideal week look like? And then in enrolling my EA, my executive assistant in that as well. So telling her, this is where we are now. And this is what I want my calendar to look like by, uh, and before it was a date of, you know, by the beginning of Q4, right? Like, this is what I want it to look like. Um, Yeah, I think those are probably the biggest. And then... Yeah. And then the rest comes from journaling. So just my daily awareness of what's coming up for me, of making my I am statements, you know, I am expansive, expanded and expanding. I am at peace. Um, And then asking myself, how can I show up today that supports that, that helps make that happen. And that helps inform um, what to add, which led to like hiring that coach, the, the meditate, the person I'm doing meditation with, and she's helping me with my fitness and wellness journey. So that's kind of, um, yeah, the process that I've used. That's beautiful. And I'm just curious, was journaling, did it come easy to you or, or did it, it, did it take a moment to get used to doing that? 
I go through phases. So I was really heavy into it a couple of years ago when I was working with a, a wellness coach and um, he had me journal every morning. I would write down my three words that I wanted to embody that day. Um, so I am humor, I am power and I am curiosity or I'm curious. And then I would write down my um, the times during the day that I was worried about. And I would write myself as I'm showing up as humor, I'm showing up as curiosity. So if I was intimidating a director of operations who maybe I was intimidated by for whatever reason, I would write how it'd show up with humor. So I went through a phase where that's what my journaling consisted of. It would be every morning for about, I probably did that for three or four months solid. And I just picked it back up actually, because I found this, the, I am the, I am journal. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. I looked at my bookshelf and I saw it and I'm like, what is that? Um, and I'd been obsessed with, I am, I am just going back to, to declaring who I am. And, uh, a friend got it for me for my birthday last year. So I've just been journaling it here. So it just gives me a prompt every day of what is my burning desire and how am I showing up? So that's really, um, the journaling I do every day. And then the last type I do is a Google doc that I share with my executive coach. And he said, when you feel frustrated, angry, uh, there's a team member who's bothering you or you're unsure about something, journal it, like just put it on this Google doc. And that way we have a starting point when we're, when we're chatting. So that's been working really well for me. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it takes that, uh, Oh, it, this comes back to awareness, right? We, we start, I think we talked about this like minutes ago, you know, it's like awareness and that's, and it, it was, uh, the reason I asked, cause I'm intrigued by it. Cause it, that was the hardest part. Like I have four things that I do every day and that's that I meditate, I read, I journal, and then I move like you were talking about movement. You know, and I like the word movement over exercise. Like, it's just going to be different all the time. You know, sometimes I'll do yoga. Sometimes I will do strength training. Sometimes I'll run whatever I'm doing. I'm going to create movement in my life. And journaling was the hardest out of those four for me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why maybe, uh, you know, also probably comes from child childhood stuff because I, I was like late in reading and, and writing. And so maybe like there's a self-conscious thing, but I do know that I had a resistance to it. So I literally had to write like today is Monday and I'm writing in my journal and I'm writing in my journal. Like I had to like be that <laughs> to like, get yourself just, started. totally. And I would just give myself five minutes. I'm like, okay, just write for five minutes, whatever you write, just write. And then that's how it was. I, and I don't, you know, I mean, there's probably lots of reasons why it was, but now it's like one of my favorite parts because of the awareness, because even, and sometimes I'll randomly let myself flip back and read something go like, Whoa, I didn't know I was thinking that three months ago. And, you know, just, just that. And then just even sometimes never going back, it just still like, it comes into my neurons of like where my awareness is, you know? So, so now that you are journaling, just, I guess one, one, uh, just a couple more questions. We're almost going to come to time, but what, uh, how do you, you know, having this habit now of journaling, how do you think that affects you? Oh my gosh. Um, what helps me is that I start with the I am prompt. So um, it, it at least triggers something for me. And so how it's helped me is that I declare who I am and what I am committed to showing up as. And so a simple thing uh, was that I wanted to close the gap between my inner wisdom and inner knowing and me taking action on it. Uh, tangibly, as a CEO, I have a couple team members. And in month two, I would know they're not right for this role. I would feel it. My inner wisdom would be like, ugh. But my brain needed eight months to catch up because I needed the evidence and the pros and cons and the rationalization. So what I started journaling is, you know, I am clear. I am decided. Uh, and what happened is I started speaking my truth in real time. And so when I hired new team members, if there was something I didn't agree with, you know, that they did, or there was a different way of doing it, I would let them know. Instead, before I would keep it to myself. So by me just journaling and saying, I am, you know, uh, speaking my truth in real time, I'm sharing my honesty with my team. I started doing that um, without way less hesitation than before. So yeah. So I've just started living into that possibility that I journaled about. Which is coming back to those words you used, collapsing timeframes. And because yeah. it comes back to the awareness and then you're now, instead of waiting that eight months, you're able to see it. It's uh, 
so beautifully said and it kind of like circles back to the beginning of our conversation and just with a few minutes that we have left i like to ask this question like if if someone this is the last time someone was to hear from you like listening to this podcast and and they wanted that more business more life what would be like either the first step or the big thing like if if you were uh, giving that one piece of advice, what would be the one thing you would suggest if someone wanted to to live more of the life that you have now? Yeah, it was one question that helped me um, last week. Uh, I was running into a phase of monotony and I just felt routine, monotonous. I wasn't inspired and it, w- it was starting to feel like a grind. And so I asked myself, how can I create a new context? How can I reimagine my environment? And that could mean internally, like food, water, movement. It could mean my physical environment. Um, it could mean, so I put on Rihanna's Fenty show, which was super inspiring. It's all like behind her creative genius. Um, and that was for me in that moment, as simple as how can I change my environment? How can I re- reimagine my evening? So that question, um, I think, is a good start for someone to start because it can be overwhelming to sit, just say, well, what do you want? You know? So I think just starting with that question is a good starting point. It is. And, you know, and, and it's like taking one step, you know I mean? That's basically when, you know, if you want to walk anywhere, you got to take a step. So, yeah. Yes. So take a step and, and it's so awesome to see all the steps that you've taken and will continue to take. And uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about the next time that we're on a show together and see where you've taken your life and how many people you've impacted. I know in my heart that you're going to impact so many lives. And so I just want to honor that. And I just express my gratitude for what you're doing in the world. And and you, you truly are. Whether you, uh, And I think you realize it. I think you are. But, you know, keep celebrating, Danielle, because you're doing amazing things. So. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you so much, Steve. I so appreciate you coming on the show um, with us. Thank you, Daniel. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. This has been amazing. It's my pleasure. And as always, until our next show, remember everyone, choose gratitude and create freedom. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for listening to the More Business, More Life podcast. I hope you got value. And if you did, we have so many more things for you at stevenopleton.com. You'll be able to connect with us on social media. We are active. You can ask us questions. And then on top of that, I want to give you a really big gift. And it truly is. We want to give so much value. We have an offering. It's a program called clear path to customers. It's the same way that we attract wow clients and only working with the right people, the people we want to. And it's transformed my business into millions more in revenue with the right people and my clients. And we're doing it absolutely free. So you can go to stevenopleton.com and grab that. You just got to put, put in your information. We'll send it to you promptly. And that again is on stevenopleton.com. I look forward to having you on the next show. Until then, remember, choose gratitude and create freedom.